and Dr. Rick while I was wrapping in on it. Hope everybody's having a good day. I hope that you have had a great start to your week. Uh, no matter what, no matter where you're at right now, no matter what's going on, where you feel you're at, just remember if you're still breathing, you're still in the fight. Um, I have a couple of things I want to share with you, talk about uh, the topic at hand from where I'm sitting. Uh, first and foremost, if you haven't checked out the two videos by my beautiful wife addressing uh, entitled teens and entitled uh, youth and young adults and uh, the level of disrespect and disregard that we are seeing with our kids and our culpability in it, as well as what needs to be done, uh, you need to see it. Uh, the last one I posted today is definitely fire. You want to check that out uh, if you haven't seen it already. Uh, second of all, if you aren't aware, I'm in the midst of writing book number 25, uh, an unbelievable milestone for me, something I'm excited about and proud of. Uh, what I'm writing about is even more exciting to me, and that is the entire uh, panoramic dynamic of wealth building as it pertains to uh, blacks from 1865 to now what we faced, what we've had to overcome, what we still have to overcome, uh, how we do it. Uh, the solutions are there. And I'm doing that now. I'm also offering uh, the opportunity for anyone who wants to, to sponsor space in the book to celebrate someone uh, that you deem worthy of celebrating, whether it's a mentor, whether it's your parents, whether it's your spouse, whether it's a child that you're excited about, maybe your child just graduated or maybe your child is on the way to college or maybe your child just got their degree or whatever it is. Uh, you can uh, sponsor space in the book. There's no minimum to sponsor. This is inviting everybody to be a part of it. That's why there's no minimum. Uh, there's obviously things that as you sponsor in higher amounts that you get uh, from anywhere from a book, uh, to a dedicated page of your own in the book, uh, to being able to submit a picture of somebody you really want to celebrate. The link is in there to take you to the page. Also, I've created a page. I'm doing a series that outlines the content that I'm putting in this book so people will be aware of what we're going, where we're going with this book, what we're doing with it, how deep it actually goes. This is years of research. This is a culmination of the entire dynamic, not just black economics, not just the investing, not just ownership, not just supporting black businesses, but how it all comes together, how it impacts your children, how it impacts their ability to learn, how it helps to write the pathway uh, of how they're going to travel through life. There's so much more to this conversation that we aren't having on a regular basis, and I bring it all to head in this book. Uh, I've created a space on the Odyssey Project site where you can get all the videos. They're on this channel, but they're going to be on this page as well, uh, as well as more information on how you can sponsor. Click that link, go to the page, and share that link. Uh, with any and everybody so they can see what's going on and literally take a trip down uh, this road as I write this book uh, you get to share with me uh, with that out of the way okay uh, unless you're under a rock you are now uh, aware of the fact that we're probably in the second week of the R. Kelly trial now, in this particular trial, I think it's taking taking place in New York, and it has to do with child, uh, I mean, with uh, human trafficking and uh, some other violations um, that he has been charged with, and they are definitely reporting uh, with great detail what... Um, the witnesses are testifying to. Now, right now, uh, it's important and, and only fair to acknowledge that right now it is the prosecution's turn to put forth their case. So obviously what you're hearing uh, will be considered damning evidence if it can withstand uh, cross-examination, if it can withstand the defense uh, defense's rebuttal to the evidence, which is yet to be seen. I'm not here to argue guilt or innocence. 
I'm here to argue what I know to be true, what I know to be factual, uh, based on what I've been able to read and see. Uh, the first thing that I will do is say that I've never watched that infamous video that came up years ago that everybody talked about. To me, that is tantamount to uh, watching child pornography. If you tell me it's an uh, underage kid on there and they're having sex acts and I go watch it, I'm watching child pornography. And I just never wanted to watch it or see it. Um, I know enough people said that they believed it was him. And so uh, I was going to have to go with what was said and deal with it. My thing I want to talk about is why we won't have a deeper conversation about something that is so important and prevalent uh, in the black community. See, we see the monster. If, if you take everything that is being said about R. Kelly and you say it's true, then he's a monster because he has uh, victimized young underage women, so you can call them children. Uh, I have no place in my heart for people who victimize children. Uh, with that being said, here comes the question that nobody wants to entertain because, see, then it takes actual thought and examination and, 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 and retrospection and so much more to be able to answer. The question is, okay, yeah, we see the monster. We must hold him accountable. If he did what they said he did, he has to be held accountable. I have no problem with that. I'm never going to argue for someone just because they're black and, I, and we see white people getting off. At the same time, I don't believe we throw our people away. I, 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 I look for redeemable qualities. Are there redeemable qualities? Can there be a healing? Can there be? Those are questions that need to be asked as well. Here's the question that nobody wants to ask because then it takes the simplicity of our anger away from us. It takes the simplicity of our rage away from us. Here is the question. So if we can have such anger and vitriol towards someone because they violated people under age, how do we deal with the fact that he was a victim himself as early as nine or 10 years old? How do we reconcile that in our minds that we will not give any attention to that. Now, when I say give attention to it, I'm not in any way saying that we use that as a way of justifying what he did because that's no justification because at a certain point, you become an adult and you become responsible for what you do and you need to understand who you are and what your weaknesses are. You need to understand what you need to work on. You need to understand the need for uh, healing and help. And we, you need to understand that you will be held accountable and that you can't carry around all of the things that happened as a kid as an excuse to not be responsible as an adult. And one of the reasons I love my wife so much is because she had every reason to just go completely left, be angry, uh, misuse, mistreat. And she's one of the most loving people. She works with young girls uh, in the uh, foster care system. She works with young girls in the juvenile justice system who are literally actually incarcerated uh, during their youth, uh, who are victims of sex trafficking, who are victims of uh, uh, childhood sexual abuse in the home, who uh, are there because of things they've done in many instances while running away from an abusive situation. And she's been there for, but she was abused as a child. She was first molested at five years old. Then it happened again that she was raped twice as a teenager. And yet she has this loving characteristic about it. She had this responsibility. She knew she had a responsibility to herself and to her children to heal. And so she didn't carry that. She didn't use that as a weight. And so uh, I'm in no way excusing if what they're saying about R. Kelly is true. I'm in no way excusing what he did by talking about what happened to him. But that has to be a conversation. Because you know what? All the kids that we're defending now, all the kids we're fighting up for now who are being molested, who are being abused, who are being mishandled, are going to grow up. Now, the, the funny thing is that if you do the research, 
what most people make an automatic assumption on isn't actually true. The vast majority of kids who are molested as children don't grow up to be molesters. That is a, a myth. The truth of the matter is most grow up, but they grow up with other issues. They grew up and they have very hard times trusting. They have very hard times developing long lasting and valuable uh, and functional relationships. Um, they tend to either become totally sexually secluded or highly promiscuous. They get into other things, but uh, they don't necessarily become pedophiles or feeble files. Uh, and if you don't know the difference between a pedophile and an ephebophile, a pedophile is someone who is sexually attracted to prepubescent uh, children, children who haven't developed uh, sexually and physio, uh, uh, physically. And so they look like kids. Uh, an ephebophile is someone who is attracted to someone who isn't emotionally or mentally mature but has developed physically so you're talking about teenagers predominantly uh and so that that's the difference uh both are equally disgusting uh and should be viewed though as illnesses because i can't see and and and, and they are uh in the dsm viewed as illnesses and i can't see anyone that is of the right frame of mind and the right frame of thought thinking that that would be okay uh, now, granted, there are times in history where adult men did marry young girls, um, and a lot of people want to use that as the framing for saying it's acceptable uh, and talking about different times, different cultures, different situations. That 13-year-old girl isn't the 13-year-old girl of today. That 14 or 15-year-old girl that was married in the 1600s or the 1400s to an adult man isn't the day and the life expectancy was different. She, she might not live to be an adult. Uh, so many more things. And um, what we have to look at is our children aren't emotionally or mentally equipped to be dealing with that type of uh, reality. And it's our job as adults to protect them. And the thing is, when you talk about protecting them, you have to understand those that have been violated will become adults. And so then we'll be dealing with what they become, whether they are one of the rare occasions that actually they become a predator, which is like I said, a lot more rare than people think, or will they simply not be as powerful and as functional as they could have been if we had protected them. But at the end of the day, there's going to be issues if we don't deal with it before they get out there. Now, the problem with R. Kelly isn't only that he was violated and not protected. It was because everybody in his circle was more concerned with what he could do for them instead of being willing to help him hold him accountable. And you never know. That may have been of some people that want to hold, wanted to hold him accountable. A lot of times when you have resources and you have a bunch of yes men or yes women in your circle, and you have a couple of people who literally actually care about you, the person, and they come to you and they try to pull your coattail, uh, you dismiss them and you push them away and you get rid of them because they are calling you to something you don't want to acknowledge. They're calling you to something that nobody else is making you face. They're calling you to something that uh, if you were to really truly face it, means a whole lot of changes need to take place, that there are some real dark places you're going to have to go in before you get to the light. And it's easier to just hide yourself in this behavior uh, because it's where you feel safe. It's what you know. And the thing is, nobody was there to sit up and say, dude, I can't be a part of this. How many people had to be complicit, complicit, in this behavior for it to have been successful for as long as it had. Uh, are we going to actually hold them accountable? Are we gonna pull them out and say, okay, if it wasn't for you, this couldn't have happened. If it wasn't for you, this couldn't have happened. You facilitated, you were an accessory, you played a role in it. And, you know, but what I'm, what I'm, what I'm getting by what I'm reading uh, on this trial, I'm not you know trying to keep up with too much, but what I'm reading on it is a lot of people are bailing themselves out of accountability by testifying against him. Again, 
I'm not here because I feel sorry for R. Kelly and, and, and what he did for women. I'm here on a much bigger scale in using this situation as a conversa conversation starter about a much bigger issue. We can't, what we got to do is stop pretending like R. Kelly is an anomaly. That's what we have to do. We have to stop pretending that R. Kelly is an anomaly. We got to stop acting like, man, that dude. We got to stop acting like we don't have an Uncle Charles Charles in our family. We, we got to stop acting like we don't have those people in our family that we don't let our children be around. We got to stop acting like we, we don't know that uncle at the family reunion that anytime a kid goes near him, you're watching. And, but nobody's ever held him accountable. Nobody's ever sat down and said, okay, you've done this. You're going to have to uh, answer for it. You know, they're just moving around. There's this natural uh, instinctive inclination to protect them. We'll literally turn on the victim if they dare come out and speak boldly about what happened. Oh, I've seen it happen. I've got clients that it's happened to. Hell, I'm married to a woman it happened to. They don't want the truth to come out. We will protect the, the predator by sacrificing the victim. And we act like there's no elephant in the room. We act like that there's no problem. Now, again, I wasn't there. So I don't know how much of this is true and how much of this is sensationalized for the sake of trial and how much of this is people thinking that they can get something out of it, uh, whatever that may be, uh, because we're understanding he's broke. Uh, but somebody with that level of giftedness won't be broke for long if, 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 he, if he ends up free. Uh, he's too gifted. Um, now, I don't know how many people actually buy his music. Uh, but shoot, man, if we start, stop, if we actually stop buying music because of people doing some shady bull crap, we won't be listening to any, uh, if we want to be honest about it. And that's another conversation. How do we handle this? The, it, there are some questions we really need to ask ourselves if we're going to hold ourselves to a certain standard. You know, we can't pick and choose who we're going to have issues with, who we're going to counsel and not deal with the everyday issues and problems that are sitting right in front of us. We can't use R. Kelly as the target of our anger and vitriol because of what we saw growing up. And we, we weren't willing to deal with that. We need to go back and deal with what we actually saw growing up instead of taking it and making uh, uh, R. Kelly some type of archetype of our suffering. Whoever was a victim of this brother, if 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 there are victims, uh, and I'm only saying that because we haven't gotten uh, all the information, but it doesn't look good. It looks like there are some things and I, I can, uh, I mean, uh, for the sake of le legality, we have to say alleged. Uh, uh, for the sake of legality and liability, we have to say alleged. But at the end of the day, we act like, you know, he's the only one. And so all the there's a reason there's a lot of rage going on. Yeah, there's some people that just sit up and say you can't have you you, you you can't do that to underage women or children. And there are even some men coming out and say they were forced. You know, and again, people tend to fall out of the woodwork when there's something going on. And again, I'm not sitting up and I'm not uh minimizing or marginalizing the experiences of these people. I don't know them. I'm not calling anybody a liar. I'm saying that they're telling their story and that and people have a tendency to come out of the woodwork. Would it be the first time that people came out and said some things about somebody that wasn't true? No, it would not. Would it be the first time that somebody came out and everything that was said was true? No, it would not. What I can say is there's a problem. There's a problem with what's going on. And this trial should be something that forces us to have this conversation. He's not an anomaly. He's a representation of a dark part of our history. He's a representation of a dark part of our current reality. And we are going to have to deal with this. We're going to have to realize just how uh, common uh, this is in, 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 in so many different ways. He just happens to have a big name. 
He just happens to be a celebrity that people recognize. But there are so many more like him that are skating under the radar. And there's no attempt whatsoever to hold them accountable. And we're expecting to produce functional, competitive children in the up and coming generation when we haven't protected them. We are expecting to be a viable uh, force in a world that's inherently hostile towards us while pretending it didn't happen to us. Oh, we, did, we, we have some conversations that we need to be having. We have some questions that we need to ask. See, the first question, as I mentioned in the beginning is, if we're gonna hold him accountable because he's messing around with underage children, how are we going to deal with the fact that it happened to him? See, when you ask that question, it, it, it makes you grapple with the fact that he's not 100% evil. He came from something. See, we got now you've got to start dealing with cause and effect. You've got to start dealing with the origin of the illness, and nobody wants to talk about it. That's it. That's what... I, I, I want to put that out there. You know, I was talking to my uh, my friend and colleague, Dr. Michael Blanchett, this morning. We've got a couple of projects coming up that we're excited about, and we were working on that, but we were just talking about the fact that there's so much that we sweep under the table. There's so many discussions we don't want to have. How easy we gravitate to the light stuff because it doesn't demand anything of us. We give more value to our celebrities. Why? Because they entertain us. And being entertained doesn't come with a responsibility. But what happens when it's time to sit up and say, the changes that we need to see are going to come from us taking decisive and deliberate action? When we get to that point where we are literally well ready to address the elephants in the room, depression amongst black men and women, childhood sexual abuse, adverse childhood experiences, poor eating habits, failure to holistically educate our youth and prepare them for a world that's seeking to literally annihilate the destruction of the black family nucleus and so much more. I've dedicated my life to, to being a source of knowledge and solutions, not just knowledge because knowledge by itself isn't enough. We got to be able to take the light and apply it to the places of darkness because light drives out darkness. That's been my goal, to give you the light so you can drive out the darkness, but we don't want to have those discussions. We want to talk about the, 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 the easy little shiny things that we see, but we don't want to deal with the more weightier issues. And so I, I, I'm just sitting up and I'm watching and I'm going, look, you know, I'm writing a book on, 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 on the development and building of black wealth. And it's so much more complex than we like to make it because it requires us to be functional and whole in other areas. It requires us to understand that money isn't just about buying things. Money is about resourcing our growth. Money is about resourcing our children's learning. Money is about putting ourselves in positions of power and leverage. It's about all of these things and it requires a strategic plan and the willingness to engage that plan with 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 an unmitigated uh, yearning and desire to carry it out. But when you got stuff like this, that is so pervasive in our community, you are going to sit up and you're going to sit and, 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 and be frustrated in your efforts. Why? Because we're broken. We're broken at a level. When I wrote Born in Captivity, Psychopathology is a Legacy of Slavery, one of the things that I consistently refer to is that a bunch of the pathological behaviors that are so detrimental to our empowerment 
have been embraced as culture. We say, that's just who we are. No, that's what we've become because of the trauma. That's what we've become because of the oppressive forces. That's what we've become because of the lack of access. That's what we've become because we've turned in on ourselves. That's not who we are, not inherently. It's time for healing. It's time for healing. I hope that I've ignited a desire to take this deeper because I plan on doing so. Uh, but we've got to do better. Look, I'm going to get ready to get off of here. Uh, still a lot of work to do today. Don't forget, if you haven't clicked that link, to go on and sponsor a space on this book so that you can celebrate somebody or something that, that means something to you. Go do it now. Uh, while you're there, check out the videos on uh, of you know that that outline what's going to be in this book. I literally am doing a series of videos. We've done six so far, and we've got many to go of what's in this book. And we're going from the black codes, which had a major impact on the inhibition of blacks to sit up and build what uh, generational wealth collectively. And we've got a lot to deal with. We're going to deal with that. So. Uh, if you haven't clicked that link, click it now. Go there, and you, it doesn't matter how much. You can do $0.50, cent, $5, $10, $50, $100, or whatever. And you can do as much. The, the more you do, the more you'll get to do in the book. Uh, and plus, at $25, you get the book, a signed copy of the book. At $100, you get your own page. You're, you won't share your page with anyone. At, at $250, you will actually get to have your own page and submit a picture uh, that's uh, symbolic of whoever or whatever you're celebrating. On that note, look, I've got to get out of here. i got a lot of other work to do. Probably will drop back in on you a little later. But I just had to talk about that. So that's something to think about. We're going to talk about it again in the future. On that note, I'm out of here.